I hope you're fine. Nice to see you online. Um, oftentimes, I'm uh, yes, yeah, very interested, interesting for me how young people are interested in heavenly things. Many of us we think, oh, there's those young people today, they are not interested in God and in heavenly things. But I, as a teacher, I realize oftentimes how interested young people are in spiritual and heavenly things. And I hear my pupils talking all the time about a special drink that brings you heavenly um, uh, body parts even. And this morning we look in one psalm where it's talking about one very powerful drink. And those young people, they talk a powerful drink, they talk about a powerful drink that even gives you wings. And this drink we read this morning about, it does not give you wings, but it can give you a totally new heart. And we can open our Bibles to Psalm 116. And I want to start off with the verse of one. In Psalm 116, it says, I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. So once again, we find a psalm of somebody who is in great need. And this guy, he uh, experienced God's help. And so he says with all his heart and with much thankfulness, he says, I love the Lord for he heard my voice and he rescued me. And oftentimes it's, it's a question of how deep is my longing for God and my knowing of how God is. I, as a teenager, I can remember uh, we as a family, we were sitting in the living room of my aunt and we were watching the European Soccer Championship. I think it was in the year 2000. And I can remember in halftime break, I was going to the toilet and I was praying, God, please help my country to win. <laughs> And I came back only to see that my country did uh, lose uh, very, very badly. <laughs> and I can remember that I was really um, sad. Why did God not answer my prayer? And oftentimes, we don't really have a longing for God. We just have a big longing for that blessing we want to have. But we find a very different attitude here in the psalm. We find a guy having big love for the Lord, not only big love for the blessing, but a big love and a knowledge about the character of God. And this is something that God really um, um, motivates to give us and to give us uh, answers to prayers if we have a longing and a desire, a love for his character. If, there, if he's not only seeing here a need, not only seeing a love for the blessing, but if he sees a love for himself. And we see in verse 8 that this guy had various needs. We see that he says in verse 8, For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. So there are different challenges in his life where he is um, yeah, threatened by. And we know similar problems. Maybe there is sickness and illness or in your life. Maybe you have enemies that yeah, confront you every day. Maybe there are people hostile to you. And yeah, maybe you, you uh, cry much because there is a sadness for a loss or a sadness, a fear in your life. Um, an emotional distress, a loneliness, or like he said in the last part of that verse 8, my feet from stumbling, maybe there's an uncertainty. Which step should you do next? Or which step are you even able to do? And this uncertainty, he, um, yeah, he gives, he reminds himself, what did he pray in those times of troubles? And he says in the verse 10, I believed, therefore I said. So he reminds himself and says, Oh, what did I pray in this time? And in this time of distress and challenges and problems, he was praying and proclaiming, I believed, therefore I said. And this is something very precious and what is on my heart this morning, that we need to 
walk in faith in times of trouble. There's no, no need for me that I have a, um, that my circumstances or my feelings or my fellow human beings they, that they tell me encouraging words. No, it's myself. I need to take hold of Bible promises and tell it to myself in times of trouble. And this is what this guy did. He says in verse 9, in the last part, um, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. And I believed, therefore I said. It's important to know the promises of God, to know what God has for you and is offering to you. Because it's on your part to take it or to leave it. And how sad it would be if we leave all the promises with God and if we do not use them and do not take them. In verse 12, he says, um, How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? So now God blessed. So now God rescued and healed. And he is asking himself with a heart full of thankfulness. He says, How can I ever repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? And this is an expression of greed and deepest gratitude. And this deepest um, gratitude, it leads to an attitude that has desire to give. Because we see here, how can I repay? There's a desire to repay. But if you think for a second, you cannot repay God. You cannot repay God in a way that is due. And the biggest gift is the, His Son, Jesus Christ. That He did not only come um, in humility to, the, to this earth, to show us how a person can live that walks in deep fellowship with God. But he also died for us to give us his righteousness in order to take away our uh, sinful uh, righteousness. And then also he gave us his spirit, that his spirit, he restores that original godly heavenly life inside of us. And how could we ever uh, react to that big blessing we, re we received? It's the next verse. And we read it in verse 13. And this verse I want to concentrate on now. It says, how can I repay the Lord? I will lift up or I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. There was a little story about a little... Uh, a small starving boy that was brought to a charity hospital and he was nearly starving. And there came a doctor, a lady came to him and offered him a little glass of milk. And this boy was, he was nearly starving, but he asked with much anxiety, he said, how, how deep can I drink? Because he was used in his family, if there was a blessing. If there was something good, everybody wanted to have it. And so they needed to share it. And so, so everybody could just have a little sip of it. And he was very anxious and asking, how deep can I drink? And that doctor says, with much boldness, you can drink till you see the bottom. You can drink it all. Mm -hmm. And how precious if we have this attitude. As it says here in verse 13, I will take and lift up the cup of salvation. And I will not take it only, I will drink it all. So a good reaction to this huge gift that we have in Jesus Christ is I take it and I drink it all. I drink every blessing that Jesus wants to give me. And it's not 100% clear what this... Um, cup of salvation really means. There are different aspects, different meanings that we have. But I was reminded about the drink that Jesus offered his disciples on a, at the last Passover meal. And it's interesting that uh, Jewish tradition says that those, ver those Psalms 115 to 118, those Psalms were uh, traditionally sang after the Passover meal. So it's quite possible that Jesus with his disciples sitting on the table were praying and singing that psalm that talked about um, 
yeah, that talked about the salvation that is coming and that we need to take. And if we remind ourselves when Jesus was sitting at a table with his friends, um, in those times there was only one little sip for each one of them. Jesus has one cup and he said, now take it all. So needed, they needed to share it. But this morning, Jesus offers you a cup that is overflowing, a cup just for you. And there a cup that is waiting for you to take it and to drink it. And in those days, the disciples, they had li very little understanding about what Jesus was talking about, that crucifixion, that he had to die, but that he will rise up again. They had very little understanding. And then suddenly Judas was standing up and the biggest feast of Judaism, Judas was standing up in the middle of the meal or was saying, oh, I'm sorry, I need to go out. And everybody was wondering, why are you leaving now? That's like on Christmas Eve, you have a nice dinner and you stand up, I'm sorry, I have a date now, goodbye. Everybody is wondering, what are you standing up now? You cannot leave now. And they were confused and puzzled what this all was meaning, really. But we today, I fear that sometimes we have as little understanding as the disciples back then. Although we have the New Testament that describes what that cup of salvation really is. And those, this cup of salvation, it contains all the blessings of the new covenant. And we read in the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 26, verse 26, Jesus was sitting at the table with his disciples, having that uh, Passa meal, that bread and that wine. And he says, take, eat, this is my body and this is my blood. So it means, if Jesus asks me to take it, I should take it in faith. I should accept it in faith, not because my emotions um, tell me it is so, but because the word of God tells me or the promises of God are for me right now. And I need to take this courageously. There is a step I need to take over my, um, maybe my bad conscience, over me, my emotions. I need to come boldly to the throne of God and take with courage. And the promises uh, are very precious to pray about. And it's precious if we pray about them to thank God for them out of a perspective that they are from me. And I want to present you five promises that God gives you today or even has already given you. And you can pray, thank you, Father, that Christ, through faith, lives inside of me. Ephesians 3, 17. I thank you, Father, that I am wholly blameless and free from any accusation in your sight. Colossians 1, 22. Thank you, Father, that I am indeed dead to sin and completely free from the power of sin because my old man was crucified with Jesus. Romans 6, verses 6, 11 and 17. I thank you, Father, that I have received the spirit of sonship that teaches me how to think, how to live and how to feel as a child of God. Romans 8, 15. And the last one, God, I thank you that I have received the spirit of power, of love, and of self-control. And this tiredness, the selfishness, and those fears, they become more and more strange to me. That is uh, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. So Jesus is looking into your eyes this morning, and he offers you the drink, and he says, take it, my child. I have shed my blood for it. I have bought it it with my life. So please take it, receive it and enjoy it. It is yours. And those promises, they need to be taken and realized as my possession. And how sad it is if Jesus is sitting at the table with his friends and some friends, they would just say, oh no, that's not for me today. And Jesus is saying, this is my body, this is my blood. There's no other reason why I shed it. It's just because of you. And some of us, we say, oh no, let me just be here in fellowship with you, uh, but let me not drink it. Let me not receive all the blessings of the new covenant. 
That would be very sad. Jesus looks you in the eye this morning and asks you to take it and to receive it. Yeah, that is a spiritual truth and reality. And don't let go of it. Don't let it slip out of your heart because of own failure or occasional disbelief and doubts in your heart that wants to come into your heart. Take it as a spiritual reality and truth that God offers you this morning. And secondly, we read in the same verse that while Jesus was eating with his friends, he took bread and he gave thanks. So after receiving and taking it, I thank God for the promises. And this thanking is a big sign that I say, it is mine. It is mine now. It's not just a truth in the Bible. It is my possession that Jesus gave to me and promised me. And this saying thank you is a strong sign of a heart that wants to believe. Because sometimes we struggle to believe. We read a uh, promise in the Bible and we struggle to take it for us and to believe that it's really ours. And then the doubts come and say, oh, you are a hypocrite. You don't believe what you're saying. You don't believe the Bible. And you can answer the doubt back. You're right. I don't believe it full yet. But I start to believe it more and more. And you need to teach yourself. You need to teach your heart to believe the promises of God. And if there are doubts coming and saying, you're a hypocrite, you don't believe. They are partly right most of the times. But it's not about... Um, my failure. It's about my becoming and about my process that I am in. And so I re respond, yes, I don't believe it full now, but I will it soon. And I'm on the way with Jesus and Jesus teaches my heart to believe it more and more. And the third thing we read in the uh, verse 26 and 27, Jesus says, take and eat. That is my body. And he says later on in the next verse, drink from it, all of you. And those friends, those disciples, they had the chance only to get one sip. But we today, we are offered a drink, that a cup that is running over. And yeah, let us fill our hearts, let us fill our minds with this special and supernatural drink. That now your workmates on your workplace, they ask you, what kind of coffee did you drink today? This should be a supernatural drink that we should uh, drink every morning that gives us so much power. And this is a process where it's not only in my mind, but it should come into my heart and deeper into my heart, into my whole identity, till my whole identity is filled with the Word of God. And this is... What this, yeah, what this taking, this thanking, but also this eating speaks of. It's not only a wish, it's not only a faith that we have, but that's a reality that uh, uh, grows in my heart. And if there is doubt coming up in my heart, don't allow doubt to steal you of your identity. Doubts are, are like spiritual vomiting. Because you eat something, you digest maybe something, but then it comes out again. That is what spiritual doubts produce. But if your natural body is capable, to, capable and able to digest everything, your spiritual body is. Your spiritual body is able to realize it and to believe it. So don't be... Concentrated on the doubts that are still in your heart remaining. Be concentrated on God's power and that God is well able to help you to teach yourself the truths that are in the Word of God. Stop believing and stop looking for any reason that tells you that you are not able and that the promises of God that He has for you is not working in your life. Don't feed from other cups. Don't feel it, feed from an old cup. Don't drink from an old cup of selfishness, of anger, of self-centeredness, of love um, yeah, for evil things. The, the, the feelings of being hurt, feelings of being lowly, feelings of being uh, treated unfairly. 
Faith is born in fellowship and communion with God. And this is the place where we should drink that cup. And it's not any prophet that lays hand on you and now you get the blessings of the new covenant. No, it's you coming to the table of Jesus and looking into the eye of Jesus and seeing that Jesus offers you this drink that you might take it. And you will find in this description below the video, you will find many Bible verses that talk about the promises that God gave you already. And that they are here for you and wait for you that you really believe them, take them, um, eat them and drink them. And that they are allowed to form your identity and yeah, make your heart firm in the word of God. Amen. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you teach us and you are here to teach us and to remind us of everything that we have been given. I thank you, God, that you have such a overrunning cup this morning for each for us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that we are able to receive them, that I am able to believe them, and that I am able, that your Holy Spirit teaches me that I really come into that identity and that belief that is according to your word. I thank you for this great day and I pray, Lord, that we are so strengthened and refreshed by your drink that we can start into this day that people can see that different drink, that special drink that we took this morning. Amen.